Um, so first, I'm really excited to um, introduce Tyler, HOTS Executive Director, for anyone who hasn't been um, around the community for a while. Um, we're all, I think, um, incredibly grateful for Tyler's balancing presence um, and positive energy that he brings to everyone in HOT. Um, so yeah, looking forward to hearing about uh, what we can all do to get involved in HOT's mission over the next few years. Uh, please welcome Tyler. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all here. So I wanted to start us off today with something really positive and just thinking a little bit about what we've accomplished since we all met together last year at the 2018 summit in Dar es Salaam. So we're going to do a top 10 list, count, counting down from number 10. Number 10, Hot was the, one of the top three contributors to humanitarian data exchange last year and we've had more than 38,000 downloads of your data by humanitarians. Number nine, HOT has been featured in multiple uh, policy reports, including the World Disasters Report 2018, which featured the Romani Huria project, and Advancing Sustainability Together, Citizen Generated Data and SDGs. If you haven't seen them, be sure to check them out. Number eight, we've had 23 disaster response activations in 2018. Uh, this was the highest number of any year since HOT's founding, and we've already had 11 this year in 2019, uh, including our second largest response ever for Cyclone Adai in Mozambique. Number seven, we've, our team has mapped nearly every road segment in Indonesia, several hundred thousand kilometers of roads. To show you a quick view of what that actually looks like. And this was done through the power of AI and machine learning using the rapid editor. Pretty cool stuff, right? All right, number six. Here's a little bit of a view of the rapid editor. So these were, um, what we're starting to introduce is some uh, new technologies, including machine learning. And um, this tool was one developed by Facebook. I think many of you have seen it already, which helps mappers to, um, to, to pre-draw some of the, the road vectors and helps mappers to do their work more efficiently and rapidly. Number five, uh, this is a little bit of a sneak preview. So our new tasking manager launch, this is the landing page. Um, most of you haven't seen this yet, but we'll be announcing it and sharing it for public testing with the community over the coming weeks. Um, Refugee mapping, so HOT worked over the past years in some of the world's largest refugee contexts, including in northern Uganda on the South Sudan border. Um, and for me, what's the most powerful thing here is that most of the mapping has been done and led by refugees and host community members themselves. Um, and here are two of our team members. So Michael Yanni is a refugee from South Sudan. Number three, we had our first gender-specific project called the Women Connect Challenge. Uh, and what's special about this project is that it's, it is about the map data that's being produced, but more than that, it's about the impact on, on young uh, women's and girls' lives. Number two, 39 microgrants and counting. So this is pretty incredible. The list here is from 2019. And so 39 communities have received microgrants from HOT, uh, but more importantly, are executing really amazing projects in their countries. And number one, so our strategic plan. I, I'm really, as I kind of end on this note, I'm really proud of what we've accomplished as a global community over the past year. Um, but I also wanted to take a moment to reflect on the big challenges ahead of us. And I was thinking about this last night and I was realizing that as I stand here today, 
We're part of a world in which one billion people have been affected by disaster over the past five years. We're part of a world with one billion people living in slums. And so I asked myself, how is it possible that in 2019, it's easy for many of us sitting in the room to order a ride, a hot meal, or a package right to our doorsteps um, with basically a few taps from our phones, but so many of our fellow humans living in high-risk areas throughout the world have been completely left out of much more basic services. And this is in part due to not being visible, not being on the map. So the HOT community has done a lot of thinking and talking about this in the past year, and HOT voting members, staff, and board all came together to articulate a three-year vision for HOT, and this is what the vision says. In our vision, we dream of a world where every person can stand up and be counted. That means that each individual and community has an opportunity to represent themselves on the best map that we have, OpenStreetMap. Last month, I spent a few days at Wikimania. This is the Wikimedia community's annual conference. The Wikimedia project dreams of a world where every person can freely share in the sum of the world's knowledge. In much the same way, we want a world in which every person can freely share in the sum of knowledge about our physical world. But this will only happen when our map represents the collective knowledge of the world. If every place must be mapped, every person must have an opportunity to take part. If we as an OpenStreetMap project want to get there, we need to create a world in which every person can freely and easily contribute their knowledge using their own devices. We have a lot of work to be able to get there. So that being said, I'm, I'm quite optimistic that we can make this happen. We have the tech that can scale both the quality and the quantity of data that we produce. Um, things like AI and machine learning, we have frequent, um, near, ubiquitous, global, high-res satellite imagery for our work. The hot community, another milestone, we're getting close to 200,000 contributors. Um, this is represented in more than 50 countries. There's never been such a huge desire to help out. I guess what I'm saying is we're at a unique point in time in the OSM movement, and I'd like to ask all of you today, what assumptions do we need to rethink to make this vision a reality? What partnerships do we need? What technology do we need? What barriers do we need to remove? This is not only about producing a whole lot of data, but producing quality data that actually gets used to improve people's lives. So let's give ourselves permission to dream big. Thank you.